We need to scale the loom's capacity to manage all those new branches. Otherwise, it will fail, and the TVA will be destroyed, and we're all gonna die. With the time loom still unstable, what will happen next? We can hack into the system. Really? Oh, that is such a relief. Uh, I'm wondering. What? I think you meant it as an idea. Can we? No. We're all gonna die still. And after two exceptionally well-made episodes, will the third entry hold up as well? As this marks the halfway point of a season where Disney Plus shows recently tend to stumble, will Loki follow suit or break the cycle? Hi there, it's Micha. If you'd like to find out, then join me for this review video. The episode starts in Chicago on the Sacred Timeline in 1868, where Ramona Renslayer meets up with Miss Minutes, who informs her that though he who remains is dead, he made contingency plans, which includes Renslayer dropping a copy of a TVA guidebook anonymously into the hands of a young Victor Timely, another Kang variant. Meanwhile, at the TVA, the timelines are again branching out like crazy. If OB can't open the blast doors and place his retrofitted appliance into the time loom, it will collapse and destroy the TVA, and maybe all of existence. To open the doors they need either the temporal aura of He Who Remains, who contrarily to his name is dead, or Miss Minutes, who has universal access, but went AWOL. Knowing that Renslayer is in cahoots with Miss Minutes and having two hits on her tempad, they figure that Ravona is their best chance to finding the rogue AI. We find right there, we find Miss Minutes. Both hits lead them to the same place, but in different times. In 1868, Loki and Mobius don't find anything of significance, while in 1893, which is also the title of the episode, they find themselves at the World's Fair, however, now on a branch timeline, mind you, as Ravona's delivery created an alternate timeline. There, Loki spots an advertisement for a show featuring astounding temporal marvels. That can't be a coincidence. Seeking out the presentation, they spot Renslayer in the crowd and, after seeing Victor Timely, It's him. Who? He remains. Loki recognizes him as a variant of Kang, which means they can use his temporal aura and don't need Miss Minutes. Timely's presentation of a prototype of a temporal loom wows the audience raising interest in his invention. I was thinking more along the lines of a partnership. No. I don't do partners. Excuse me. Therefore, the patent is sold to the highest bidder there and then. But soon the team finds out that Victor is a con artist. You're a confidence trickster. Luminary is the word you're looking Luminary, for, Luminary, of course, forgive yes. me. With none of his contraptions actually working the way he promised. Pulling those tricks off, though, still shows that he is a genius level inventor. The concepts are bona fide. So I just need the cool technology of this era to catch up with my visionary mind, you know? While both Renslayer and our heroes approach Timely and try to make him come with them, Victor's latest mark. Your inventions your are fake! Mind. Timely! Excuse me. Starts chasing him. As Sylvie also shows up, trying to kill Timely things really get complicated and Loki has to step in to protect him. In between all that chaos, including Miss Minutes scaring everyone at the fair, <laughs> Victor and Ravona make a run for it. Later, Minutes and Renslayer catch Timely up on all things TVA and why he shouldn't trust Loki and Mobius. Well, why aren't the two of you in, in cahoots with him and his butler? Loki helped murder your variant. But he was protecting me. Mm, he switches sides. It's a well-documented behavioral trait. As his place in Chicago is just a pidater, a front for his cons, they take a passage on a ship to get to his real home, a lab in Wisconsin, to pick up his latest invention. It's a throughput multiplier. It c could help you with your loom. Ravona then mentions to look forward to their future partnership. But as Victor really doesn't do partners, act on by Miss Minutes, he cuts Renslayer loose there and then. However, she keeps following them. At his lab, he retrieves what he came for. This is it. The culmination of my life's work. And is ready to head for the TVA. 
Instead, Miss Minutes tries to talk him into lying low for a while, addressing their shared past. So you gave me autonomy to write my own programming. I was allowed to have wants and become who I am. Slowly revealing her true agenda though. Why didn't you allow me a real body? Well, that, that wasn't me. If I had a body, we could truly lead together. Either freaked out by the AI coming onto him, or by the fact that she, in essence, suggested a partnership, he switches her off. This is when Renslayer catches up with him and, using the prototype of a time stick, sets things straight. I was entrusted with this mission by he who remains, not his variant. I'm the one in charge. <laughs> that moment, Loki and Mobius show up and try to talk her down but she is firmly set on her agenda. I'm the only one who can bring stability to the TVA. I'm order. Of course, on that cue, Sylvie makes an entrance, hellbent on killing Timely, until they have an important exchange that changes her mind. I can make my own choices. I'm not the man you think I am. Leading to her allowing Victor to leave with Loki and Mobius. The episode ends with Sylvie deciding to not kill Ravona, but to kick her instead to the cathedral at the end of time. There she lets Miss Minutes out again and after reconciling, the AI leaves us with a big teaser. It was foolish of him to make an enemy out of someone who knows all his secrets. I know a really big one about you. Wow, this was another great episode, but before I get into details, let's start right at the end. Whose secrets is Miss Minutes referring to? She knows all about He Who Remains, but Victor Timely is someone else. Or is he? She seems to have problems distinguishing between the two variants, saying he invented her and even goes on. When you first created me, you knew I could be more for you. So is she just confused or is this foreshadowing that Victor is not just a Kang variant? but the person that actually will become he who remains. That may explain why there is a Kang variant in the past, though Kang is supposed to be born in the distant future. Was he somehow hidden there? Of course, Kang variants may also just naturally spring up across time, as in alternate timelines different things can happen. And Miss Minutes may know everything about every variant due to her work with he who remains. This will remain to be seen. In any case, I really enjoyed this episode, which was first of all acted brilliantly. No matter what comes out of Jonathan Mayer's trial, no one can deny that he is a great actor. The theatricals on stage in his introduction were fantastic and in the chase scenes he was really funny too. On top of it all, he managed to bring this variant to life in a quite different, unique manner than his previous performances in season 1 and in Ant-Man Quantumania. Well done. The other actors were also great again, with our main duo playing off of each other masterfully. For instance, in scenes where Mobius, on his search for Renslayer at the fair, seems to enjoy the attractions a little bit too much. The Cracker Jack concession stand is a high traffic area. It was necessary and logical to go there. So the fact that it's tasty is just a bonus. Sofia De Martino also had a great moment as Sylvie's revelation at the end brought her character full circle. She killed He Who Remains to free the timeline, to allow people to have free will. As this creates the risk of a Kang variant to start a multidimensional war, she vows to kill each emerging variant that may threaten to do just that. However, standing in front of him, they have an important exchange. Please, I haven't done anything. No, you will to which he answers that he can make his own choices, which reminds her of her own past, where she was taken from the timeline due to something she may do later. Basically, she is in the process of doing to him what was done to her, punishing him for something he may never do, thereby taking his free will, the very thing she values most. And you can read this revelation off of her face. Like I said, Great acting all around. And speaking of taking her from the timeline, as the previously on summary at the start showed Sylvie asking Renslayer what her Nexus event was, I expected it to be addressed here. Instead they highlighted that Sylvie is letting go of her vengeance, as that just ate away on her, 
Instead, still punishing her, she gives Ravona what she wants. In a way. That's what you want. A seat at the end of time. Well, be careful what you wish for. That scene was preceded by a nice moment where Sylvie asked Loki and Mobius to leave Renslayer to her. Where Loki had no issue, but Mobius hesitated a moment. Where you could see him pondering on whether after all he tried, she can still be redeemed. Before giving up and leaving as well. But let's get back to the end of time. Somehow I think the big tease Miss Minutes drops about the secret involving Renslayer will turn out to be around Sylvie's Nexus event. My theory last season was that there was no reason, that she was just taken to be put on the path that would lead her to He Who Remains, as he laid out in last season's finale. That would mean Ravona took her for no reason, which should indeed make her angry, as this violates her moral as she believes all she did was fair and serving the sole purpose of bringing order. Will be interesting to see where they go with that. Overall I think this chapter was almost as flawless as the season premiere. There were fantastic side gags and fan service throughout the episode, without derailing the main plot points. They started at the beginning with the Marvel logo being shown over an old timey piano version of the usual music. Then we had Loki commenting on the simplified depiction of Asgard, without him in it. That and also connecting to Victor over the fact that they are both tricksters. Not to forget the funny moments around Miss Minutes, like her changing her color to monochrome to better fit in. Her showing up in a newspaper as some kind of a ghost, for which we had the payoff I mentioned earlier. But let's talk about Miss Minutes in more detail. It was interesting to find out that she is completely autonomous and really devious. To get what she wants, she first gives Renslayer a proper incentive. And what do I get in return? Atop the TVA, you and I will be right by his side. Then betrays her out of jealousy, as she always wanted to physically be with he who remains, and now sees a second chance, but after being rejected, immediately turns against him and teams up with Ravona again. I guess this is one of the small flaws in this episode. Not her agenda. That was crazy enough to fit right into the show, in the best possible way. But the fact that Renslayer forgave her instantly. I guess at the end of time with just the two of them, she was pragmatic. And it is in no way a plot hole, just something I thought was gotten to too quickly. Quick side note. Was that remote for Miss Minutes to release her and switch her off? Ever mentioned before? Not sure, and it felt a bit convenient here as she usually is popping up wherever she wants. But again, no plot hole, just something that felt a bit too constructed. Still led to a hilarious moment. Another small flaw to me was the fact how everyone could find Victor's lab without a tempad being used there. For Renslayer, she might have been able to visually track them, while Sylvie has the master tempad that may let her find whoever she wants, I guess. However, Loki and Mobius finding them was not explained. But since we can't be sure about what other technology may be available at the TVA, once they know someone is at a specific point in time, it can be forgiven. Maybe there is a deleted scene where they find a hint in Timely's Chicago hideout? What I also appreciated was them answering my open question from the previous episode. Did the pruning of the branches that happened last time stabilize the timeline or is OB's device still needed? They pretty much immediately answered that by saying it is stable for now, but already branching out again, with the retrofit still needed. I guess that device will not even turn out strong enough though, as apparently Victor's invention is meant to solve the big problem they have with the time loom. Would be interesting to know what would happen to the multiverse if the loom collapsed and the TVA is destroyed. Would that free the timeline completely or destroy everything? Loki seems to believe the latter. But if the loom fails, and the TVA is destroyed, there won't be a life to go back to. Not for you, not for anyone. The biggest thing I'm looking forward though is finding out if Victor is a good variant or a dangerous one. He made a good argument while facing Sylvie, but is that true? He who remains was benevolent as far as we know, being the lesser evil. So the replacement he chose likely is also a variant with good intentions. Or, like I said earlier, maybe even the exact same variant. We will find out soon. And with that being said, let's get to the rating. But before we go there, let me ask you to like and share this video if you enjoyed it so far. And if you are not a subscriber yet, maybe consider to change that. 
By also hitting the notification bell, you will get a heads up for most of my new videos. Now for the rating. Like I said, I enjoyed this episode immensely. It was almost flawless except for those very minor detractors I called out in the review part. The acting and writing was very strong, with especially Sylvie reaching that major revelation being a highlight. It was fun and theatrical, had a lot of action, but also plot development. I'm rating this episode with 9 out of 10 points, because almost all was done perfectly. There may be even a slight upwards tendency, so really well done. So, we reached the halfway point and the show is still going strong. Let's hope that the rest will keep up too. With the directing duo of Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead, who directed the excellent season premiere, returning to direct all the remaining episodes, the chances are high. Fingers crossed, so that I am not jinxing it. What about you? What do you think will happen next? Did you like the return of Jonathan Mayers? Were you happy with the episode or do you think I am overrating it? Whatever you like to share, let me know in the comments. So much for now, see you next time and thanks for watching. He made contingency he made contin he made contingency plans. Starts chasing. Starts chasing him. Therefore the patent the patent Miss Minutes tries to talk him into laying low for a lying laying? Let's lay low, lying low, laying I can't.